from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Friday, June 7th. Okay, so we have the moon in Gemini energy going void, of course, at 8.17 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're locking into Cancer energy at 8.42 a.m., again, Eastern Standard Time, which, of course, is the moon's rulership. So we're still very much in this new moon energy popping off here yesterday. And, of course, it had a lot of pressure building up in the headspace, a lot of new information coming at us, a lot of confusion, yet still kind of gaining a little bit of clarity through the elimination process of having some situations and circumstances evolve to the point where some, I'm going to say energies are being removed from our particular realm or reality at this particular time. Now, shifting into cancer energy, we're moving from the headspace into the feels. So we've been thinking about how we feel about things. Now we have to feel how we actually feel about some of the ideas, the information, the details that have emerged as of late. This is definitely going to kind of bring in a different mood, different attitude. The moon in Cancer is very introverted. We want to kind of rely on what is tried, tested, and true. We want to kind of seek familiar things, familiar people, and we're a little bit more wanting to stay home. We want to kind of, again, emotionally regulate ourselves, especially with a lot of new variables and options coming in. We have to find a new foundation for us to be operating and understanding from. So there are seven different aspects taking place here today, seven of them involving the moon, meaning this is another moon day. This is an emotional refinement day. Again, taking some of the energy, some of the information, some of the details that have been bouncing around in our headspace like a pinball machine, we're taking it down into the heart space. We have to create some sort of order out of the chaos, emotionally speaking, and kind of, again, rely on what is tried, tested, and true as we navigate the new landscape of potential possibilities. So while the moon is still in this Gemini energy, we're going to make a beautiful interaction with the North Node in Aries energy. This means that we are gaining insight on where it is that we could move forward, some action, some moves that could be made. We're starting to see the plans, the path, the strategy a little bit clear, let's say. However, again, reminder, process of elimination is key. Things are being removed out of our lives in order for us to actually see that that was not a favorable timeline contract for us to be pouring our time, energy, and attention into. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Pluto, the great transformer himself, retrograde in this Aquarius energy. This is a major, major shift in our headspace for the positive. A lot of the time, especially through this new moon, dark phase window, we kind of get caught up in the negative Nancy perspective. We get caught up in the issues, the problems, the challenges, the obstacles. Now we're pivoting to start seeing them as an opportunity for growth, as an opportunity for us to align with our higher mission, our higher purpose. So this major change, not only in our headspace, but in our heart space as well, is definitely empowering, putting us in a position to feel a little bit more in control over our thoughts, over our emotions, over our physical realms, a little bit more than what it is that we've been feeling over the last week or so. The moon is then going to sextile, beautiful interaction with Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires. He's in his rulership in Aries energy. We're nearing the end of this particular transit as he is kind of moving into Taurus energy here on the 9th. So again, there's a pressure building. We have to wrap this particular life lesson up. There's restlessness. There's ants in our pants. There's inspiration, excitement, determination, motivation. And sometimes we're using anger and frustration as the fuel to kind of get the fire within us burning so that we can make a change, that we can make a transition into an action point that we are all very much anticipating. The moon is then going to get into the boxing ring square off with Neptune in his place of power in this Pisces energy. This is going to be the last aspect that the moon in Gemini is going to be making before moving into Cancer energy. And it is a blending, if you will, a challenge in blending our intuition with our intellect. There is a goal, a vision, a dream, an aspiration, if you will, that our higher self wants us to pursue. But intellectually, logically, practically speaking, we have no clue how it is that we're going to bring this puppy to life. 
And so again, disconnect between the ego and the higher self, division between the heart and the head, division between what could be and what is. And that's definitely pressurizing us to see where growth can definitely take place. So again, 8.17 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're going to see that moon in Gemini go void, of course. We're locking into that Cancer energy at 8.42 a.m. We're going to sit in that for a couple of hours. The very first aspect that the moon in Cancer is going to make is a very tough interaction with Pluto, the great transformer himself, retrograde in this Aquarius energy. So again, there's an internalized power struggle. The power struggle that we are going to experience now is the new insights, the new information, the new details, the new possibilities, the new options, and the comfortability that, again, sticking with the same old, same old gives us the familiarity, the predictability of the same old, same old. That cancer energy is very attached to the past, very stuck in the past. That's when we start romanticizing the past, trying to convince ourselves that, guess what, our situation that we're in, not, not as bad, you know, not as bad as it could be, this is an attempt for the ego self to have the higher self settle so that we do not grow, we do not evolve. This is going to bring up a lot of defensiveness. It is going to trigger and activate a lot of negative narratives. It's going to bring a lot of fears, doubts, and insecurities to the surface, especially where making major changes, major improvements are concerned. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Jupiter. So we're trying to gain a positive perspective. We're trying to open up our mind. We're trying to focus on the silver linings. We're trying to use our newfound, let's call it awareness of the situation, the circumstances that either are or are not working to our advantage. And again, there's an optimism. There's a confidence that comes with Mr. Jupiter. But there's also a magnification turning all the way up, if you will, the intensity in our heart space and the division in our head space that of course is putting us in a situation to figure out the gap the distance if you will that our heart and our head need to meet at before we can engage the physical body to take action to make moves the moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer. This is a beautiful energy because it means that we're, we're really building ourselves up. We're calming ourselves down. We're soothing ourselves. We are kind of empowering ourselves. We're focused on those silver linings. We're avoiding that negative narrative. And we're trying to understand where it is that we have an opportunity to boss up, to level up into new experiences, into new soul contracts. We have an opportunity to build a new foundation if you will, of insight, of emotion, of intuition that is going to get in alignment here sooner than later. And we are going to be able to actually see some progress in a new path, in a new direction.